What is going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video comparing the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air 2020, now that they have both been updated, and that is a question that I got a lot of when I first reviewed the MacBook Air a few weeks ago. So I would say in the past, if you wanted power, you would get the Pro, it was a pretty easy option in that aspect, but this year it is actually a pretty complicated decision, both on the side of the MacBook Pro, as well as how it compares to the Air. The MacBook Air is 0.3 pounds lighter and starts at a price of $9.99, and the Pro starts at $12.99. And if you are a student, make sure you go ahead and use the EDU discount because you could probably save about $100, I believe. So this is definitely a decision that I personally had kind of trouble deciding between, and I ended up going with the Air in the higher spec models. But just to get things started, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the configurations because that's where the complication kind of starts. If you guys haven't entered already, I do have a giveaway of an iPhone SE that is ending soon, so just check that top link in the description to enter. If you guys like videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button because the YouTube algorithm usually hates my videos. Or they just suck. So beginning with the price, the MacBook Air starts at $9.99, but that is not the one that you should buy under most circumstances. Add the $100 and get the quad-core i5 processor with Intel Iris Plus graphics, and they also doubled the base storage to 256GB this year as they did with the Pro, which is actually enough for a larger population than you think, and upgrading the storage beyond that is also cheaper. On the pro side of things, the price starts at $12.99, and you get an 8th generation quad-core i5 with Intel Iris 645 graphics and 8GB of DDR3 RAM paired with 256GB of storage. All the MacBook Airs as well as the base level MacBook Pro come with just two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Where you start to get a bit more serious when it comes to price on the pro side of things is at $1,799, but once you add a few upgrades, I feel like it does make sense and is worth it. You get the latest 10th generation chips from Intel, as well as Iris Plus graphics, which are up to 80% more powerful, as well as 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, which is actually quite a bit faster than DDR3, and that is also thanks to the 10th generation compatibility. With that, you also get 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports compared to 2, and I feel like that is a good level of flexibility to have. So the first discussion is of course going to be the weight. And 136 grams just doesn't seem like a very large amount. And even at the thickest point of the MacBook Air, it is around the same thickness of the MacBook Pro throughout. It is definitely not a fat computer, still very portable, and in terms of footprint, they are essentially identical. If you're just using it like around school or for work, taking it around casually in your backpack, it is like the same weight as like an Apple and a few pencils here and there. Maybe your calculator as well, but where I do feel like there's a difference though is if you're using it a lot around the house, just using it on the couch when you're watching TV, uh, watching movies on your bed, and almost just want something that is ultra portable and essentially the same weight as the iPad, if not lighter if you have the Magic Keyboard case then the MacBook Air makes a lot of sense. And the reason why I believe it has been one of the most popular computers that Apple has ever made is because a lot of people just don't need the power. This computer is more than enough if you're doing web browsing, some photo editing, and you can even do some basic video editing on the MacBook Air that you just don't really need the extra size or price of the larger computer. In my case, the reason why I decided to go with the Air is because I already have a Mac Pro that I invested a lot into and trust for all my daily work, video editing, and I try to use that as much as possible, but for portability, I felt like it made sense to get Apple's lightest computer to be able to do web-based stuff on WordPress, Shopify, maybe some photo editing, but that extra weight difference makes me want to take it around everywhere. So the next thing to consider is the display, and on paper they might look the same in many areas. They're both Retina with a 2560 by 1600 resolution, IPS panels, but they are not the same. The Air has 400 nits of brightness and an sRGB color space, while the Pro has 20% more brightness at 500 nits and a wide P3 color gamut which gives you 25% more colors. If you're just web browsing or using email, the color space really won't matter. It's still a great display, and I don't mean to make it sound bad or anything, but if you're doing like color grading, graphic design, or photo editing, then a wide P3 color gamut is going to be beneficial. After using the MacBook Air for a few weeks now though, I can say that 400 nits in some situations is just not enough. I'm sitting in the dining room and it's facing the sun, you've got windows, and in some cases, I just feel like even at max brightness, I still have a bit of trouble seeing certain things on the display. So after hearing about the display, I'm sure some might be leaning towards the MacBook Pro in terms of the brightness and the additional colors, which is very good for photo and video editing. But now as we move into the internals and the chipset and graphics power, that is once again where things get very complicated, especially if you try to look at the comparables at the same price point. 
On the MacBook Air side of things, it is 10th generation chips across the board with the faster RAM. And assuming you upgrade to the i5 for $100, it is a quad core with a clock speed of 1.1 gigahertz and a turbo up to 3.8 paired with Iris Plus graphics. I will tell you right now that for the most part, the computer is gonna run under two gigahertz because of the thermals. Moving over to the pro side, you have an eighth generation chip that is quad core i5 clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, but as you spend $1799, you get a two gigahertz 10th generation chip with more RAM, faster RAM, more storage, more ports, and you get the point. The difference between a 13-inch Pro base and the upgraded model is that the 10th generation chip has support for the faster DDR4 RAM, graphics up to 80% faster, but from a CPU standpoint, the differences are relatively minor and just not as big as you might think. The RAM speed comparison is decent enough at 3733 MHz for the DDR4 compared to 2133 on DDR3. On everyday tasks, you're really not going to notice, but as you push it and are using more RAM at once, that is where there might be a small advantage, and DDR4 is also more efficient, but once you even it out with like the CPU and everything, it's about the same battery life. Just for my performance test though, I could tell you that I was pretty impressed with the power, especially on the $1799 MacBook Pro. As expected, the Intel Iris Plus graphics as well as the CPU all kind of come together in hopes of being able to support video editing even in 4K. And if you're editing like a very manageable file format like MP4s or from a Sony camera or 1080p from a vlog camera, I think you should have no problems at all. The MacBook Air is actually also capable of editing video, but it just isn't made for that and I feel like it just makes sense to make the jump if you plan to do a lot of it. In Lightroom, I tested it with batches of 10 or less images, and for the most part, there was no hiccups whatsoever. But the one thing to consider, of course, is thermals, and even when I'm like navigating or just have a lot of tabs open, I find that the fan starts to kick up right away. For anyone who is trying to make a decision though, at the same price point of say $12.99, I can understand why it may be very difficult. On one side you have the MacBook Air that has the Intel Iris Plus graphics, that is a pretty big boost, as well as quad core processor, 10th generation, up to 16 gigs of RAM, but for the same price, the MacBook Pro just doesn't match in terms of pure performance. The MacBook Pro seems like a logical jump, but $500 for a computer between models is a relatively substantial difference. I obviously can't make the choice for you, but I just wanted to kind of lay out the different performance experiences that I've had on both computers. Even with the 10th generation processor though, and faster RAM and a better graphics chip, one thing that you do have to consider is that the MacBook Air is extremely thin. It's got one fan inside, the fans are going to kick in even if you're trying to run like a long software update. And for the most part, even though you might be able to do some video editing in 1080p and maybe even a bit of 4K, it is going to heat up and it's definitely just not made for this type of stuff. The baseline MacBook Pro with two Thunderbolt ports also only has one fan and if you're running like basic tasks on an everyday basis, then it's going to be able to run at cooler temperatures for longer sustained periods of time. But if you plan to do any video editing, I would say that the chip itself is better on the MacBook and you might have like an external display or you should just spend the extra money and get the $1,799 model with the new chips, more RAM, more storage and better graphics for the MacBook Pro. That upgrade especially will make a lot of sense for people who do like video editing on the go because you also have the better display that is built in. At the meeting price point of a good spec MacBook Air and the baseline MacBook Pro, I feel like Apple almost had to do something like this in order to avoid kind of cannibalizing their own lineup because the decision would have been just too hard if this baseline had a 10th generation chip as well. When comparing the drive speeds on these two devices, on the MacBook Pro I was able to get at or a little bit over 2GB per second in real world tests, whereas on the MacBook Air I was getting just under 1.5GB per second. Either way, it is much faster than a lot of the SSDs that you're able to get on the market that you'd have to plug in externally, and I do think it's nice that they did upgrade the storage because 128 just doesn't seem enough, especially when you consider the operating system and what space it takes up. On the audio side of things, both these computers saw an improvement this year in terms of speaker quality. On the MacBook Air, you have louder speakers this year, more bass, whereas on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, it has high dynamic range stereo speakers. The MacBook Pro 16 is obviously still in an area of its own, it's the studio quality, and I would say both of them do an amazing job in terms of speaker quality, and although the one on the MacBook Pro is a little bit better, it is definitely closer to the quality of the MacBook Air compared to the one on the MacBook Pro 16. One area that you just can't escape with either of these computers though is a 720p webcam on it. It just really isn't that good, and although nobody really cares what they look like on a tiny zoom screen, I feel like a good selling point would have been having a 1080p webcam on the upgraded model of the Pro as well as the 16-inch MacBook Pro. 
So here we are testing out the microphone on the MacBook Pro. I'm gonna switch over to the Air in a little bit, but I'm just sitting in front of it as you would if you were talking on a conference call or something. And the audio quality is said to have been improved with the triple mic setup. And I'm kind of curious as to whether or not it sounds any different to the one on the Air. Now we are over on the MacBook Air and I have both these set to the maximum recording from the exact same spot. And I have to say Apple has done a pretty good job in terms of audio improvements on their computer in just the last six months or so. The one on the MacBook Pro 16 is impressive. But from my initial testing, I think the ones on the MacBook Pro and Air are really good, but those cameras just gotta be at least full HD. So on the battery side of things, the MacBook Air is rated for a maximum of 11 hours and the MacBook Pro is rated for 10 hours. Not a huge difference there, but I definitely noticed it a little bit and I would say on like actual everyday use, the MacBook is able to get me anywhere from around four and a half to just about five hours. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, I would usually get around four hours using the same tasks. I know you guys have heard me talk on and on about the new scissor switches and how good they are and the improvements that they made after a terrible era of butterfly keys, but it is nice to see that the entire lineup now has the new keyboard technology and Apple is so confident in it that they even made a keyboard case for it that they charge a lot of money for, but personally, I have no complaints of that. But now that I've talked on and on about like the specs, the differences, and the complicated decision as to which one you should buy, I will say that if you ever have like a desktop computer like a iMac or like a Mac Pro, and you don't really need the amount of power on the go aside from like admin work, but still wanna have a computer instead of a tablet, then a higher spec MacBook Air in the i5 model will be more than enough for what you need. And I just don't think you need to go with like a $1,799 MacBook Pro. But on the other hand, if you need one computer that you rely on for everything, and then I feel like the $1,799 model makes a lot of sense because of the upgrades to the chip, the RAM that's faster, the storage that's also faster, and I feel like it can be very capable for its size. With that being kept in mind though, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is also on the horizon. Apple is said to have been working on a 12 core CPU that features eight high performance Firestorm cores and at least four energy efficient Ice Storm cores. It will be built based on a five nanometer architecture and aside from optimization and control as well as large performance gains year by year, which they haven't been able to get with Intel. The chips are also gonna be made on a five nanometer architecture and are likely to be more energy efficient paired with the mini LEDs being more energy efficient as well. On Apple side of things, it is also said to cost them 40 to 60% cheaper, which will hopefully make the MacBook price either stay the same or down a little bit because you have to keep in mind the mini LED does cost more to make. Lately, Apple's only really reduced the prices on their main line of pro computers in the upgrades, whether it is storage or RAM. And I think what I have to say about that is that the price of that, just based on the mini LED display rumors, is not going to be exactly comparable to those who are considering the prices of the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. I believe it's going to start at a price of around 2000 and up. I would say for most people, the MacBook Air's power is going to be more than enough, especially at the i5 spec. But if you do want to upgrade, go for the $1,799 of the MacBook Pro. As always, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Make sure you drop a comment down below, drop a like on this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.